see that so here i will mention the topic name so 32.1 .1 means the first uh, chapter out of it the, please note that here the chapter name is the chapter number is 3 but as per my understanding am 32 so this is the first one so it will be mentioned as 32.1 and the book reference would be given over here chapter 3 is the book reference okay so and here this is the first uh, am statement so the first am statement it it will be mentioned like over here as a so they are saying that calculate where using a historical simulation approach okay so how do you compute where using historical simulation so historical simulation is whatever you had uh, seen in level in part one that we arrange the data return data from lowest to highest and then we select the percentile let's say like we have to find out five percent where we'll select the bottom five percent uh, of this and then accordingly we'll see that which point will have data as five percent below it so that is how we computed the historical wear so it's a what we do is like we do a ordered loss observation okay if there are ten thousand observation then five percent tail so we are interested in five percent wear so five percent tail would imply that there are five hundred observation in the left tail now what happened is as per the in the examination okay, uh, in the GARP examination what we have seen is sometimes GARP mentioned that the 500th element is the where sometimes they mention as 500 first element is the where okay however since in this book Kevin Dowd what they have mentioned is since where is the loss beyond that point so we will not take the 500th observation as the var value but 500 first value would be taken as the var value so there is slight inconsistency over here but we would go as per the chapter okay so the chapter mentioned that if you order the 500 first one would be the var value so an example could be let's say if you order the values let's say some values are here here all these returns are here let's say these are 10000 returns are there Okay, so you will select the lowest let's say this is the 500th one so we'll say that the where will be the 501st element so if you see what happens is like there are 10,000 observation so you would uh, be confined if you see like 5% we took so the values is 500 okay I can also go for 5.01% so I can go for 5.1% sorry I can go for 5.1 percent in that case the 510th value will not be the var as per this book it would be 511th value or I can also go for 5.019 percent var so it would be meaning that 510th value will be the var estimate in case if I require let's say computation of 5.001 okay var 5.001 percent where what will happen is this historical where will fail because I do not have the 500 so I have one data 500.1th data okay but essentially I would say that a value 500.2 value would be the where measure however this value cannot be estimated right so what happens is the accuracy or like not the accuracy in reality okay the significance level the percentage significance level which you can go over here it very much depends on the number of observation that you have if let's say you have only 100 observation then you will typically not be able to find out this where also you will not be able to compute 5.1 percent where because you do not have the value of that Okay, so one of the limitation of the historical measure is this number of observation and it is kind of a very much a discrete approach so because these values are very much uh, tied to the discrete value but as we know that in reality the distributions are not discrete so we have the distributions like continuous distributions so we should be able we, we, we have a smoothed continuous data so that that is the problem in case of historical where another problem in historical where is it gives us gives the same weightage to all the values so if you see like over here 
all these values which are below all these values which are below have been given the same weightage okay in term in times of certain scenario let's say when the volatility in the recent past have been a lot this this is not a appropriate measure so we'll see like what are the different measures we have we what are the different methods we have which are which are slightly better than this approach okay okay so uh, that we will see in the next reading okay but here in this particular reading we are bothered about this historical wear and then the parametric wear so here we are mostly focused on the parametric measures as so historical wear is actually a non parametric measure because you are not assuming anything about the distribution so in case of historical wear you are taking whatever is the actual distribution or the real distribution is okay now let us see the next los ask about us about the parametric estimation so they are saying that compute the wear using parametric estimation so you are assuming that the return distribution is normal or a log normal distribution so if you assume that the returns are normal distribution then how do you compute var and if you assume that the returns are log normal distribution then how do you compute var so this is the requirement so what we are saying is if there is a normal distribution the var would be given as this actually i could not copy it better so var at alpha percent alpha is the significance level okay so var at the alpha significance level it would be given as minus mu okay plus the standard deviation so this is a return mu of return profit or loss measure this is a standard deviation of the profit or loss plus the associated z value which you have seen in your part 1 also in part 1 we have seen that where is given as one wherein we said that it is given as minus z sigma here we had assumed that the mean return is zero however when you don't assume the mean return to be zero it would be given as mu minus z sigma okay now when this approach is taken one of the problem that this approach brings in is what happens if the var comes to be positive value okay this as an example let's say suppose the mean return is 10% assuming and the standard deviation is 2% okay so here the mean return i am taking as a positive 10% and the standard deviation is equal to 2% and you are trying to compute the var at 95% confidence level or 5% significance level so your alpha is taken as 5% significance level in that case how do you compute the var okay so it will be mu minus okay so if you see actually this minus is a uh, you we are trying to say because it will be on the left side and var is mostly we say that var is 500 million so var is taken as 100 million so it is implied that this is a loss okay so that's why like uh, here the negative value is taken so here the return uh, okay so we imply that it is a, a positive value so but in reality var is given as mu minus z sigma so if you add minus above this so it will become minus mu plus z sigma that is what we have written over here so do not get worried about why this minus and plus it it is exactly the same it is only that we are appending mu minus z sigma with negative because we will say that var is taken as the positive value okay so what we are having is this 10% and stand at 95% when we have when we are computing the 95% what is the value of z what should be the value of z that will be taken when uh, your var is computed for 95% okay or 5% significance level it should be 1.65 so what we have is 1.65 into 2 okay so what will happen is this will be 10 minus 3.3 so it will be 6.7% now what exactly this 6.7% implies okay so you are taking that this var is actually coming as a positive value right in reality var is a negative value so this is var is actually negative so this is one of the failure of this approach it does not take into consideration it does not explain that what exactly value at risk is when it is a positive value we have always thought about value at risk as a negative value okay 
but you do not have to worry uh, too much about this because most of the places with which we will see it will be like this standard deviations would be very high let's say example of standard deviation is 20 percent so in this case your the var will become minus 23 percent okay and then we are so this is your percentage if you multiply with the value you will get the actual dollar loss okay so in examination as you have seen in your level one you can get a computation because the aim statement it says that you have to calculate so you have to calculate the you uh, bad so it the example is like assume normal distribution mean return is dollar 10 million standard deviation of the return is given they are asking you to compute the 95 percent and 99 percent where so only thing that you have to remember is at 95 percent we use 1.65 at 99 percent what is the value we use it will be 2.33 okay so this is the value which we take for 99 percent where so you just you have to plug this in the this so you have minus 10 plus 2.33 three three into fifteen this is for computation of ninety nine percent so it will be how much thirty three thirty thirty four thirty five so it will be roughly your twenty five million dollars so the where is expressed as twenty five million dollar it is actually taken as a positive value but here as per this formula this is a positive so what we say is you have a nine one percent chance is that your loss is more than 25 million dollar 99 percent chance that the loss is less than 25 million dollar okay however so this is what you have you have taken in your level one also okay now the next is they are saying that assume that the distribution is a log normal so the return is log normal okay then how the var would be given so what we have to do is we have to just scale up this okay and we have to make it on the exponential so here we are bothered about what would the price okay so please note that the value would decrease so typically what you have is it is the price so you have this as the price and your price can go down to certain value so you have price minus this so since it's a log normal since these are the returns so we have what is the value it will be e to the power of r so this is the return and we have e, this will be equal to e to the power of r from here we have to go on the negative side so we subtract 1 minus this value and then multiply with the pt please know that this is t minus 1 because we are saying that when we are computing the var we have to find out for the next period what is the value at risk so we have to find out for th day what would be the value at risk so for that we will take the price one day before so this is a pt minus one we are taking right so just try to understand this okay I'll just give me one second okay. so what i am saying is this is the just one second this is the price t minus one you want to find out what would be this value so there will be a reduce reduction in the price tomorrow how do you compute you know that the return e will be tomorrow return will be r how that r return will be coming you know that it is mu minus z sigma so you know this value it will be e to the power of r okay so what we have is we are taking a reduction in this value so mu minus z sigma so this the new price will be pt minus 1 minus pt minus 1 into e to the power of mu minus z sigma so you will get this value so pt minus 1 1 minus e to the power r this is what you are getting the value usually as we have said that this r is by default it is taken as negative okay so it's assumed that it would be negative that is why you are seeing a slight inconsistency in this and other this the one I have given over here because it's minus that is taken right? so please remember this two formula okay this formula is very simple to remember okay what you have to do is you have to remember the first one okay if you remember the first one so 